Okay, moving on and thinking about resiliency. So resiliency to me is ensuring that we start to address some of the challenges we've got around waste, around uh, the circular economy and the such like. The first thing that I, I sort of um, draw people towards to say, hey, take a look at this is the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I work with the United Nations um, like framework on, on climate change, but these, these uh, UN SDGs sort of help you go down deeper into understanding how you can apply some of these to your business. It's actually really, really good business. There are businesses out there that can, that can align profits directly to, to the adoption of these different principles. There's also the circular economy. So taking things that we produce on the farm as waste and reusing them as well, maybe within the economy and with partners. I've seen people use everything from, uh, from, from mash from, from, from brewing beer to then grow mushrooms all the way from, you know, like I said earlier, anaerobic digesters taking waste food and producing methane. Um, it's, it's, it's an exciting world. Circular economy is going to be something that we're going to have to focus on. It's going to have to be something that the agricultural industry uh, really starts to get very, very very good at in fact we've kind of got a waste problem in the world um, we're going to see about 3.4 billion tons of solid municipal waste generated by 2050 and of the same waste about a third of that is not managed in an environmental manner in north america the largest amount of waste we have within city context is food waste as well so we have to understand what we can do there and, and part of the waste problem we've got is plastics or, or novel entities, as it's seen by the planetary boundaries framework here. 80% of all plastics uh, ever produced remain in the environment. In fact, it's got twice the mass of all living uh, mammals on the planet. There's a problem and we need to do something about this. Um, yes, there are new ways of thinking about plastic offset credits and whatever, but it's kind of starting to be gamified a little bit and green used as greenwashing for, by a lot of companies. But at the same time, there are fantastic companies like Footprint that are stepping up and they're saying, okay, we can use you know, plant-based boxes and, and, and start to think about how we can re revolutionize packaging that's not only biodegradable, but can be used again and again. I like to think about uh, indigenous thinking as well when I think about this. You know, indigenous populations survived for, for thousands of years before colonization. And uh, they, they've, they've operated for a very, very long period of time. They think that this idea came from about the 11th century by the Iroquois, the, the seventh generation principle. So whatever we do today resonates through seven generations ahead of us, about 260 to 180 years. Uh, so it's interesting to think about what if we planned our businesses in the long, in the long term? And as a futurist, this, this excites me to start thinking about, okay, we can't just produce waste and know that suddenly we'll just dig it into the ground and it will disappear. What if we do something that's more impactful? It's not easy to really address the sustainability, uh, circular economy, um, and these development goals, but we have to start. So what if we formulate um, sustainability and cir circular first operations? What if uh, agriculture and consumer packaged goods businesses join forces to aim for zero plastic waste? I think now is the time to do that.